Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look how we can easily and quickly create a verse shell on a Windows machine using PowerShell and the PowerCat module. The PowerCat PowerShell module extends the functions of NetCat and NCAT. PowerCat brings the improved functionality and power of NetCat to all the recent versions of Microsoft Windows. It accomplishes this goal by using the native PowerShell version 2 components. For this lab, I will be using one install of VirtualBox to include the extension pack, one virtual install of Kali Linux, and one virtual install of Windows 10. Now, if you need a copy of Windows 10, go out to Google. You're going to type in Download Microsoft Windows 10 Developer. That'll take you out to the developer site, and from there, you can download an image for VirtualBox or VMware for Windows 10. This version of Windows 10 that I'm using for my target has been made vulnerable using a number of vulnerable scripts that I downloaded from different sites on the internet. These scripts disabled the real-time scanning capability of the Windows Defender antivirus. These scripts disabled the Windows Defender firewall and the scripts disabled Windows Defender. I also use group policy up inside of that Windows 10 box to disable downloading of any Windows updates. Both of my VirtualBox network adapters are set to NAT network. So make sure that both of your network adapters for your target and your attack machine are set to NAT network. You'll then want to find the IP address for your attack machine. You do this by opening up a terminal and typing in at the terminal ifconfig or ip space addr. This is a copy of the Windows 10 Developers Edition. I downloaded it from the Windows 10 Developer site and I downloaded a OVA file for VirtualBox. And now with all the administrative junk out of the way, we are ready to proceed on with the lab. The first thing we want to do is create a working folder. So on your Kali machine, on your desktop, right click anywhere and from the context menu you're going to select create a folder. You're going to call this folder PowerShell. I don't care if it's uppercase, lowercase, any case you want to use. Once you have that working folder created, go ahead and return to your desktop. You're going to find that working folder. You're going to right click on it. From here you're going to select from the context menu open terminal here. We next need to download the PowerCat PowerShell script from the internet. That script is available up on the GitHub site. This is the address and we're going to use wget to download the file and save it to our PowerShell working folder. For this to work you will need internet access. Once you have everything typed in correctly or copied and pasted from the lab file or from the description up inside of YouTube, you can go ahead and hit enter. You can go ahead and minimize your terminal. And now if you open up your PowerShell folder, you will see that you have downloaded that PowerShell script that will give the functionality of NetCat to our Windows target. Go ahead and close out your working folder. Bring back up your terminal. At the prompt, go ahead and type in clear. For the target machine to be able to download the PowerCat script, we must have an HTTP server available so that the download can be brought over to the target. So let's go ahead and start a Python simple HTTP server. So at the prompt, you're going to type in the following, Python space, dash, small letter M, give it a space, type in simple HTTP server, and watch out for the upper and the lowercase lettering of this syntax. Give it a space. You're going to type in the port number we're going to be using, which is port 80. Once you have everything typed in correctly, just go ahead and hit enter. We now have a simple HTTP server running inside of our PowerShell working folder. So to clarify, the HTTP server is going to allow the script to be pulled over to our target using PowerShell. Once that script launches, it needs a listener. To do this, we're going to open up a second terminal and we're going to create a netcat listener listening on port 4444. 
and at your new prompt you're going to type in the following commands nc space dash small letter v small letter l small letter p give it a space followed by the port number 4444 and hit enter this is the syntax that we're going to use up inside of the command prompt on our windows 10 target to pull over powercat launch it and create that reverse shell back on over on our Kali machine. So at the command prompt on my Windows 10 machine, I am going to paste this at the prompt. I'm going to tell it that I want you to launch PowerShell. That is the dash C. That switch tells it, launch me an instance of PowerShell. And I'm telling PowerShell, go ahead and create me a new web client so that I can download from 10.0.2.15 which is the IP address of my Kali machine. I want you to download the PowerCat.ps1 script. Once PowerCat has completed the download of the PowerCat PSI1 script, I'm telling it that you will launch PowerCat, that is the PowerCat space dash C command, and you will connect back on over to 10.0.2.15 using port 4444, and you will give me a replication of the command prompt that you currently have up and running. That is what the dash E is for. So we're going to go ahead and just copy this right here, like so. Let's go ahead and minimize. And here on my target, we're just going to go down here, and we're going to launch a command prompt. So I'm going to type in CMD at the search bar. From there, I'm going to launch the command prompt, run as administrator. Now I have a command prompt. Let's go ahead and increase our font so we can see what we're doing here. Currently, I am logged on as IE user on that Windows 10 Developers Edition. At the prompt, I just right click and my commands are automatically inserted at the prompt. Now the commands are automatically going to run. If it comes back to the prompt, you know that you're good. Now, once I go back on over to my Kali machine, I should see this at the prompt for the listener. Let's take a look. And so you can see that if everything lines up correctly and we do our due diligence and we make sure that the IP address for the target is correct inside of that command to throw that reverse shell back on over to our target, we will be presented with an elevated command prompt courtesy of PowerCat. So at the listener, if I type in ipconfig, I'm going to get the same results as if I was sitting on the target typing in ipconfig at the command prompt. And if I hit enter, it comes up and it gives me the basic IP address information that is available on that target machine. The one caveat to all this is that you must leave the command prompt up and running on the target machine while you're using the reverse shell. If you close out the prompt, then you're going to close out the reverse shell. So in this short video presentation, you got to see how easy and quick it was to create a reverse shell on a Windows client back on over to our attack machine, Kali. We did this by giving the functionality of Netcat using the PowerCat script we uploaded and ran on the target machine using PowerShell. I'm Professor K. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.